I would like to talk about the fascinating origins of the dulcet bass rumors. But before talking about such interesting personalities as the late Paul Benowitz, I would like to give a brief UFO sightings history of New Mexico. This is northern New Mexico. There is Albuquerque, Los Alamos, Taos, Archuleta, Mesa area, even though Dulce is not mentioned here. Uh, you have Aztec and Farmington. I created my own map of New Mexico here. Albuquerque, New Mexico is a very important city that has the Kirtland Air Force Base. Inside the Kirtland Air Force Base are the Sandia National Laboratories, the Air Force Research Laboratories, and Manzano Underground Nuclear Storage Facilities. Right next to the main gate of Kirtland Air Force Base is an interesting company called Thunder Scientific Corporation. After the conclusion of World War II in 1945, many German scientists, engineers, and even some former SS intelligence officers from Germany were brought to the United States and were temporarily stationed at Kirtland Army Air Base through a program called Operation Paperclip. Many of those scientists and engineers were then transferred north to Los Alamos National Laboratory. Many others were transferred south to White Sands Missile Ranges. By the way, White Sands Missile Ranges today has the nation's leading edge directed energy weapons testing programs with microwaves and lasers. Everybody has heard about the alleged 1947 crash of an object just north of Roswell more towards the Corona area, some say. And some others say that the crash took place near Capitan Mountains area. Just north and right next to the White Sands area is a small town of San Antonio, where in 1945, after World War II, a strange object reportedly crashed outside this community. Just north of San Antonio is a small town of Socorro, where in April of 1964, a local highway patrol officer allegedly spotted an oval-shaped object that had landed in the desert. West of Socorro is Magdalena. Further west is Datil, or Dedo. Near here is the very large RA National Radio Astronomic Astronomical Observatory. Further west are the plains of San Agustin, where in 1947, another object reportedly crashed. Going north from Albuquerque is Los Alamos National Laboratories, the world's leading edge DNA research, genetics, and human genome research. Northeast of Los Alamos is a town of Taos, known for reports of strange humming sounds allegedly heard for many years. Here is Dulce, New Mexico, the main town of the huge Hikaria Apache Reservation. It used to be called Agua Dulce before the United States created the Hikaria Apache Reservation in the early 1900s. Agua Dulce was a community of Indo-Hispano people who were ranching in this area for many, many years, actually from the late 16th century. Further west is the town of Aztec, where in 1948, an object allegedly crashed just outside the town in the Hart Canyon area. I have heard that a few residents of Dulce even reported seeing a strange object flying towards Aztec in 1948. Slightly southwest of Aztec is Farmington, where in 1950, an amazing mass sightings of what appeared to be hundreds of flying saucers were reported for three days in a row during noontime. Huge saucer armada jolts Farmington, said Farmington Daily News on its March 18th newspaper. Craft seen by hundreds. Yes, craft seen by hundreds. Well, there's a typo error due to his excitement, probably, of the reporter. I don't know. But anyway, it said speed estimated at 1,000 miles per hour, altitude 20,000 feet. It was even reported by Los Angeles Times on March 18, 1950. Here is an artist's rendition of what hundreds of residents of Farmington may have seen. It certainly appeared to be an armada of flying saucers. 
Now, speaking of interesting objects, here's a photo of a German flying wing prototype aircraft called Horton 229, one of many German flying wing aircraft developed from the late 1930s and tested in the early 1940s in Germany. This particular one by Horton Brothers was test flown in Germany in 1943. The shape was sort of a boomerang delta shape. This is interesting because when Kenneth Arnold reported on June 24, 1947 that he had witnessed nine mysterious objects over the Cascade Mountains, he described the objects as boomerang or crescent-shaped objects that skipped like saucers but did not look like saucers. Here is an artist's rendition of what Arnold may have seen. Here's another artist's rendition of the Arnold sighting. By the way, here's an artist's rendition of Horton 229, a prototype German flying wing aircraft that I just mentioned, which was reportedly test flown in 1943 in Germany. Horton 229 reportedly had a ramjet engine attached and had a speed of 600 miles per hour at that time. What's interesting is that many of the alleged witnesses of the Roswell incident of 1947 in New Mexico described the object not as a disc, but rather delta-shaped, such as this artist's rendition of the Roswell crash. Frank Kaufman of Roswell described the object as delta-shaped. Here's an interesting photo of another German prototype flying wing aircraft. The origin of this photo is still unknown, as far as I'm concerned. Here's another artist's rendition of the alleged Roswell crash of an object, the Roswell incident of 1947. Now, LA Times investigative journalist Annie Jacobson wrote a best-selling book in 2011 titled Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base in which she interviewed more than 90 former employees of EG&G Corporation, which was the initial contractor at Area 51 in Nevada, beginning the early 1950s. One of the more, uh, former EG&G employees that she interviewed was Alfred O'Donnell, who said that he joined EG&G in 1947, the very start of the EG&G Corporation. He reportedly told Jacobson that it was the Soviet Union which had acquired the Horton 229 flying wing aircraft from Germany and intentionally crashed it in 1947 in the American uh, New Mexico, southeast of White Sands towards Roswell. However, I personally believe that it was the United States and not the Soviet Union that had acquired the bulk of German prototype flying wing. Here's a photo of Alfred O'Donnell. Here's Richard Mingus, who used to work as a security guard at Area 51 for many, many years. This is T.D. Barnes, president of the Roadrunners Internationale, the only existing organizations of former Area 51 employees that worked on top secret projects at Area 51 during the Cold War years. This is an artist's rendition of what Lonnie Samora may have witnessed in April of 1964 in the desert, just outside of the town of Socorro, New Mexico. Coincidentally, on the same day, an alleged incident involving a landing of a strange object was allegedly reported at Holloman Air Force Base, just south of White Sands Missile Range. Now, in 1967, the United States government exploded a nuclear device underground, about 22 miles southwest of Dulce, New Mexico, just right next to the Hikaria Apache Reservation, adjacent to Highway 537. Before December 10, 1967, Government agents reportedly visited Dulce, Aztec, Farmington, and other communities, informing the residents that on December 10, 1967, people may feel an earthquake, but it was 
just a governmental project called Project Gas Buggy, which, whose purpose was to help ease the flow of natural gas and trap deep underground beneath hard rocks in that region. Here's an actual photo of the nuclear explosion on December 10, 1967. The explosion took place about a mile and a half deep underground. These are dust spiraling upwards from that explosion. The government began to notice that noticeable amount of radiation soon began to leak out slowly in that region and that it may have affected animals in that area such as cattle. It is my conjecture that beginning around 1975 the government began to monitor the radiation levels of certain animals in that area, particularly some cows in the Dulce area. Today, there's a government plaque at ground zero of the 1967 underground nuclear explosion. It says on December 10, 1967, the Atomic Energy Commission exploded a nuclear device underground on this very spot. A couple of concrete slabs cover part of the hole they dug for this experiment. The government constructed a steel tower around this spot and bore a deep hole underground and on December 10, 1967, the switch was turned on for the experiment. The ground zero area is located in a remote area that is quite difficult to reach for most people because one has to go through a Hikari Apache dirt road and it's very winding and it's quite confusing. In fact, Hoyt Villarde, former police chief of Dulce, had told me that he had never visited the Ground Zero area. In May of 2012, I took a bunch of people to this area, including Hoyt Villarde himself. This is the Sandia base, right inside of Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque. It consists of the Sandia National Laboratories and its sprawling projects buildings. Here's the former Manzano underground nuclear storage facility. The bottom third of this mountain is hollowed out. Now, this area is also known as the Manzano base. It was reportedly started in 1947 to store sensitive materials, including nuclear warheads. But uh, it is our understanding that the Air Force in 1992 closed down this facility and moved the facility to another section of Kirtland Air Force Base in 1992. Now, Coyote Canyon is between these two mountains and covert project structures are said to be in that canyon. By the way, Sandia Laboratories also started in 1947. It seems like many important events took place in 1947. For example, the CIA the successor to OSS, started in 1947. The National Security Act was passed in 1947, and consequently, the National Security Agency was established in 1947 also. The Department of the Air Force was established in 1947. Southern California's very important Edwards Air Force Base was established also in 1947. And, of course, EG&G Corporation, the initial contractor at Area 51 in Nevada, was established in 1947. Perhaps these are all coincidences. In part two, I will, take a, I will talk a little about Paul Benowitz's story, as well as about some other fascinating personalities involved in the initial Dulce Base Rumors. This is Norio Hayakawa of Rio Rancho, New Mexico.